our best of three. In the bottom left, the Spanish champion in the red is Vortex. And the top right, overjoyed, vice champion of Germany, the last orc in the race, is Spiral. So, Amazonia, our first map. And uh, yeah, we briefly touched on the vetoes, but I think it is worth mentioning here once again what this kind of shows us at first glance. So Spiral vetoes Northern Isles and Echo. He definitely doesn't want to play against Crypt Lord, or at least doesn't want to give the Crypt Lord a good map. Northern and Echo, probably the best for that Crypt Lord kind of play. And Vortex vetoes Terranus and Twisted. And that is quite interesting. Twisted, I think, is a given against Orc, but Terranus... That is usually a pretty good uh, Crypt Lord map, but perhaps also good for the Orc to counter expand. But Terranos and Twisted Vetoes, that is just standard undead vetoes, like Ted Fiend, long, uh, a quick tier 3 transition, one base play. So that might tell us that Vortex is going to be playing just straight up standard. And Spiral, what we see from him, is once again Grubby Inspired, a fast Farseer Headhunter play. Yeah, as you would expect from Vortex on this map, it's just a standard Death Knight opener. He got the perfect scout inside of the Orc main base, saw the War Mill, so he already pretty much knows where this is going to head towards. And he's kind of... Is he trying to sneak his Death Knight across on the left side? Yes. Doesn't want to be uh, meeting this false here really anywhere. He might just go and steal some of the camps on oh. Spiral's side of the map, which is always nice because then you, you deny the Chieftain from getting those camps and... The rest of the camps, like for example the expansion or the shop, are mo much bigger ones and much harder to do. Oh, that's really cool. Going for the green up here, it's gonna have more skeletons soon. Then he can go for a lightning shield creep for a fast level two. And if he can force back the Farseer without the first hero, that's basically the perfect response. It costs a lot of ghoul time though, so that's a lot of lumber not being harvested. This will definitely delay the tech for the undead, but experience is of course also crucially important. Yeah, but an Acolyte already falling here, and another one being chased away from the base. That's going to be quite a bit of gold here that uh, Vortex is going to be missing. First Ten Hunter already being there. This push is looking really strong. The Scouting Acolyte is coming back to get back to work and uh, start mining from the gold mine. And AS Paul is just going to do the exact same thing that Vortex is doing. Vortex actually with a Lightning Shield on the other side. <laughs> Somehow got down onto the Death Knight. So now they're mirroring each other's creep routes, which is pretty cool. Interesting. Seems like both thought about this. Vortex willing to sacrifice his economy and tech a little bit early to steal that camp away. And I guess that's a little bit better for Vortex because his Lich won't be as level-reliant as the enemy TC will be, which is very likely the second hero there. But now Spiral can creep up very well. More and more headhunters are coming in. The wolves are still tanking the damage. And a fast level 3 Farseer would go a long way. Yeah, there's so many small camps on this map that you can creep. Uh, might be good for Spiral to maybe go for the uh, Kobolds just slightly above this location to get that as well as another item and quite a bit of experience. And Vortex looks to try and do the exact same thing here on the other side. He still has the creeps that is lab if he wants to go and uh, grab that later, so maybe saving it. And yeah, Spiral's getting that too. Alright, very even progress here. Experience-wise between the two. One worrying thing is, where's the TC gonna creep? He's really the hero who needs to get some camps securely. If the Farseer gets level 3 over at the Merchant, then there's certainly not gonna be much of anything left for this Torrent Chieftain. Maybe going for the Murlocs now would be the better idea. That's enough for the level 3. And then leave the rest for the TC, but then again, yeah. also gonna take still a while until the second hero is actually out. Yeah, if you save that for the TC here, it's like really awkward because you get the merchant on the right side, but then where do you go? Everything else is like really far away if you go for the expo, for example. So I think getting that right now is okay because he's gonna have wolves level two, and then he can just creep more easily when the TC is out thanks to those wolves. So go straight to the expo, for example, and then go for the mercenary camp in the top left. Vortex, kind of close here to level up. Would love to steal these creeps away. Chain Lightning denies one of those. And suddenly it's the DK having trouble, great trouble to get to level 3. He wants to keep the lab for his Lich, who should be coming out soon. A yeah, very fast tier 3 here for Spiral. He just started Torn Chieftain first, and then as soon as he had enough gold, started that tier 3 immediately. 
Yeah, now might be a good time to wait a little bit, and then I think you can start creeping maybe the, with the expo first with the chieftain and just the units and wolves and keep the fast here. Maybe harassing. The Rejuvenation Potion was such a perfect item here. He took a bunch of damage, wasn't that high on mana either. He even used the Clarity actually on top of that. Wow, and look at that. Spyro creeping the natural. Creepjack here could be painful. He doesn't even have a speed scroll. Why doesn't he have a speed scroll, I wonder? I guess to pick up the item. Because oh, he hasn't watched enough Grubby. It's super close. Actually, Vortex is going to go over. A little too late to do anything about the big creep. He could snipe one headhunter if he's paying attention. And he does, and even the surround on the Farseer. That might be a little too ambitious that the TC's coming in. And he does have a stomp. That should be one fiend going down for the certain. The TC has a speed scroll. He could cut him off. Oh, he storms just on time to prevent the death score and gets one single fiend here. Very reminiscent of the matchup against Night Elf, where you're proud of yourself, you know, to get that surround against Night Elf usually. On the Demon Hunter, you think, yeah, that's a great play, and then suddenly you notice, wait a minute, I can't hold it. Everything's dying outside of it. Losing that fiend definitely hurts, but also not being able to creep on the TC is a problem. The DK dropping low, though. There is Chain Lightning, remember? Yeah. And Stomp, and he has the speed scroll. But this Farsi, needs to be careful as well. There is Descoy level 2, the Lich is there now. And he did go for Nova first. I'm gonna go for one of those headhunters. Farsi is trying to sneak around. Vortex making sure there's no expansion coming up. That's something you always have to double and triple check. And the TC finally starts creeping. That's a tiny camp for this TC. This isn't even level 2. Yeah. It's kind of weird that he started creeping the expo before the TC was out, for sure, because that would have been level 2 easily, but I guess he didn't want to wait and sit around. Farseer going for Acolytes here. Ooh, the tech is nearing completion, but that's still going to prevent a lot of mining here. Already got two of those Acolytes. He can stuff yeah, out as well pretty easily. Great play by Spiral. If he gets level 4 here already, that's really helpful to have for the fast Chain Lightning. And the TC manages to creep bottom right. Needs to creep this correctly though. He's gonna take a he is gonna take a lot of damage from this camp, no matter what. Even if he creeps it perfectly. Oh, and another acolyte. Gonna go down to the wolf here, I believe. Yep. Vortex, don't know where he was looking. Uh, Vortex yeah, was he was just in the top left. And right now he saw a fast here in his main base. I wonder if he can anticipate that Sparrow is in the bottom right and Sparrow is not even gonna take the risk. He starts pulling back immediately. That would have been insane if he just went there. But yeah, now Tiny Great Hall Players is going to be set up immediately. Down. And with the Berserker upgrade on the way, Spal is, is going to have a very strong army here. He already has got plus one attack. Yeah, and here now the damage to the economy is critical. If there had been full mining for the Ac from the Acolytes this whole time, then there could be a strong army for Vortex threatening this expansion right away. But that's not the case. It's still only three fiends. No third here yet. Vortex is still pretty much super broke. This is looking great suddenly for Spiral. Expanding on this map is so strong because unlike on most other maps, you have 20k gold. So if you can just set up and keep it, it's just going to be a, a massive economic lead that you're going to have for such a long time. Like long after the main base mines out. We see there's 7,000 gold left in the main base. Well, that little Farseer push into the main, killing the Acolytes really completely shifted the momentum in Spiral's favor. And now this is a great strategical position as well. He's threatening the camp, creeping off the camp. He's keeping attention bottom right. And that kind of keeps the expansion in the north safe. And Vortex is in a terribly tough position. Where does he go? What does he do? In fact, I don't even think he knows about this expansion yet. Dark Ranger now there. That might make him confident enough to fight now if he can prevent the stomp for a long time. There's not even an invuln on the Chieftain, so it's not like you can uh, cancel out that... Uh... Thailands. And Beast Cherry on the way now for Spiral. So he's looking to add some Kodo to his composition for the aura. And patient play here. Just standing around, bottom right, buying time, waiting for this expo to pay off more and more. Are under when you know, the expo was so off bits that it's like so hard to guess that it's there. I think if he did know, obviously he would send some ghouls probably. It was like the Farsi had staffed out, and then he just bought this and then set it up immediately. It's like really hard for you as Undead, I feel, if you don't scout it, to read into that enough to know that it's there. He has very good items here on his DK. 
double circlet, the belt. Well, the belt not so much, but uh, the big mana also. Close level four. But Spyro can go into high supply here very, very soon. More upgrades coming in as well. 2-0 on the Berserkers in a moment. Yeah, actually, Dark Ranger went for Black Arrow first. We've been seeing that more and more. If you can kill a ton of skeletons, and I mean, the Berserker, they're tankier than the Headhunters, but they still die pretty fast against Orb and Target Fire. You can get a lot of skeletons, gain momentum, and then win a, an important fight, ideally. That's not level 4 already. Purely Berserkers here, nothing else. So far. But Dakota will be coming soon. And Raiders. And Sprawl already on 61 supply here. Not getting any more upgrades for now. Yeah, the the Raider is super important because it's like your main way to kill destroyers. If there's no destroyers, then wolves can still be very useful, but then you uh, just ensnare that from really far away, take out the destroyer, and wolves are gonna help a ton. But that Torrent Chieftain not being level 3 here. That's supposed to be a problem, but Vortex doesn't feel like he has enough. I mean, he's kiting right now. He's gonna get chased down. Torrent Chieftain trying to get on top of the army. He's gonna land a big stomp. Take down the statue almost right away as well. TC has to be careful, by the way. He has a heal potion, but no other source of healing. We don't have heal wave, we have Hex first. Hex was on the Dark Range, so I think Spiral doesn't quite realize that there is uh, perhaps no dispel. One statue gets taken out a little bit. Miss micro there by Vortex, not paying attention to it perfectly, but staying at range as much as he can. Vortex trying to get as much value as he can out of his ranged units, the Fiends, but of course this Orc army is also ranged. Almost entirely. Vortex, he's realizing what's happening now, but he just I'll can't fight yet. So he's attack. being patient, he's staying on 50 supply. Just gonna add more units and then he's gonna have to kite like crazy against this. He just can't stand there and be stomped on top of, otherwise he's gonna die very quickly. Yeah, that was a great play by Spiral. I come back again to the Acoly Acol Acol Harass. Doing that and then staffing out TC. In a bit of trouble here, but fortunately he has the big healing potion. Now coming in for the perfect stomp as well. Destroyer taken out right away. DK very far forward. Statue not grouped yet. Stomp comes in. Focus Hex. fire. Hex is there as well, remember. And with that, the DK in severe trouble. Destroyer morphed. Does he have to TP? Oh my god, he's cutting it close. TP's out at the last second. So does the TC. And I think nothing actually died, which is crazy. But still, Spiral's producing way more, of course. Yeah, Spiral is... Just incredibly rich in comparison. 70 supply now. Vortex went over upkeep. He's on 55. There's still a few creeps left in the bottom right, but it just seems like it's so hard for Vortex to effectively counter this Hex and Stomp with this much army. Whereas on the other side, as long as you take out the Destroyer, then you take out one of the main tools that Undead uh, has to try and stay in this. That Raider, that one lone Raider. Gonna be looking for the de Destroyer yet again. No silence here, and the TC came in forward with a stomp. It wasn't that amazing of one, though, to be honest. Some raiders going down, so many berserkers, though. Jeez Louise. Boros coming in to the side. There's a dust, didn't forget about it. And Vortex trapped in the corner here. There's no TP for the Spaniard to get out. How many kills can a Lich and the Dark Ranger find? Level 3 now. Big level up there on the undead side, but the Dark Ranger in trouble. Too much damage going for the Shadow Hunter after, but there's an able to protect that one. TC is now level 3 with a Storm coming in. DK in trouble. DK would have fallen, and it's GG. And 1 0 for Spiral. Alright, this uh, looking good for our only remaining orc in the series, or in the tournament rather. And Vortex, he never really. Hit his stride, right? Uh, felt like Spyro was surprising him. The echo damage was severe. The tech delay with the echo runs is severe. That feels like a little bit of an amateur ladder strat, but the faster into echoes, man, even on the highest level, sometimes working perfectly. Yeah, we see it rarely uh, anymore nowadays. It's so hard to counterplay as well, like. To always know where the Farseer is and to be in position to do something against that. Also, of course, well executed by Spiral, summoning the wolves behind the ziggurats. And with that great economic damage, he could afford to go for that tiny. That was just a brilliant game plan by Spiral all around. And despite the cool creep by Vortex early, Spiral gets the 1-0. Are these guys making uh, German Walker 3 great again or what? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's 
it's a really, really good tournament so far for Germany. Will this continue this way? We have seen quite a few turnarounds and Vortex has to step it up big time to still keep his chance for the round of eight. Otherwise, we have spiral through match points for the German in just three minutes. After a little bit of a disappointing summer, Spiral is back in full force here in fall. And he shows it on the first map, Amazonia against Vortex. That was pretty damn strong. It felt like Vortex that wasn't really his map to take. Never really found his mojo, his momentum. But that was Spiral's map. And now we go on to Last Refuge. A spiral looking very good there with the Farseer Headhunters. A decent map for that in Amazonia's. Our next map, Last Refuge, also definitely quite good for Farseer Headhunters. Question is, what's Vortex going to do now? Not seeing Crypt Lord on AZ was obvious, but now Last Refuge, both options are available, Crypt Lord or Ted Fiends. Or if he has a hard read on Farseer Headhunters, maybe even Fast Fiends Late Hero. Definitely a bit of gambling, a bit of dice rolling here with the opening builds. Yeah, because Spiral is also fully aware of that, right? That Vortex might try and adapt, so he might try and anticipate what Vortex will do and counter that himself. So there's always this little bit of mind games where you have to be uh, one or two steps ahead of your opponent, ideally. And uh, it's always fun to see what they decide to, to uh, choose and do here with these openers. So we're waiting for the admins to give us the go. The players are ready. We are ready as well. Man, this could be, if you look at the standings here, um, 
Vortex eliminating in the group stage, Thorzain eliminated in the group stage, Neutron eliminated in the group stage. This could be quite a shuffle after fall. It seems like the skill of a lot of European players, especially with, thank God we got W3 champions. A lot of people are practicing a ton and it's it's shifting all the time. There is like a hierarchy at the top that is very hard to disturb, but under that, the levels of every player are like fluctuating. Sometimes some other players are gonna do, be doing better than other. And at first it seemed, it seemed a little bit stagnant. You know, we had all the same players qualifying. It seemed like all the time we barely had any changes, but Look at Cooper, you know, like last DreamHack, he had a fantastic tournament, this time not so much. So you need to you need to keep practicing, you need to stay on your A game because there is some hungry people out there putting in the work and they're ready to take your spot if you're not. Exactly, that can be said about Blade for sure, usually about Vortex in summer, about Axlord who is really reaching the highest echelon. Side can always go there, Wan is now making it into the top eight just as Krav. And then uh, on the other side, there's players who made a super good run in summer and now w weren't even qualified, just like uh, the Muslim, for example. So rough, rough, rough tour. Hard competition in the Warcraft scene. And with that being said, we got the go from the admins. It is match points for Spiral on Last Refuge. So, our second map, the German Orc in the lead. What builds are we going to see? Spiral opening up, very standard here so far. This does not look like Headhunters. Could still be a Farseer, while Vortex across the map sticks with a standard as well. No Crypt Lord play. I was definitely expecting that for today. But not to be seen here. Once again, it's the Ted Fiend standard opening from our Undead player. Yeah. Maybe he was anticipating something to try and counter uh, the Crypt Lords, which he thinks he's going to have a better chance to face with this, the Quick Death Knights. And last game, I mean, I feel like it's kind of hard to pick out mistakes from Vortex. Like he went to the other side of the map, was still in camps. I guess maybe he took too much damage on the Death Knights and didn't see the Farseer go to his base eventually. Uh, the start was yeah, a little bit rocky, I guess, because he lost uh, two Acolytes and then nice had to replace one of them, had to send the other one from the other side of the map. So, yeah, he was just off tempo maybe a little bit the whole time. But Spiral just played super solid. It's very hard to look at that strategy and be like, oh, yeah, I need to do this very specific thing that will put me ahead this time. Do you also feel like it looks super odd, the borrow placement? No. This is something that you can make fun of me later for not being relevant. But doesn't this look weird? Not as weird as uh, Tom Cruise <laughs> saving the world in every movie he's in. Just you wait until the next blockbuster release. Or if Tom Cruise perhaps saves you one day. Who knows? Farseer starting off across the map, trying to be aggressive right away. The DK is gonna be looking to creep a little bit at the beginning. It's very important here to get off to the right start in the early. You need to know when to creep, when to fall back, which level is important, and when to harass your opponent. Normally for Undead that is, creep level two quickly, and then follow the Farseer around, making sure he doesn't have too easy all the time, because the aura is so important for the move speed and the region that you really wanna get it uh, as quickly as you can. But if you look, uh, leave the orc alone too long he's going to get level three super fast and with that a very easy expansion especially considering spiral here is playing a two borrow tech so lots of orcs coming at uh, lots of grunts coming out early really good scouting here by the way from the acolyte that one will be lost right now but it is job what a trooper we have altix teched as soon as he could when he got the woods and we got a war meal on the way on the other side for spiral here after the two grunts this time I feel like Vortex is doing better experience-wise, like he's got a good amount of skeletons here that he can keep on creeping with, gonna be getting level 2 pretty fast. And Spell is just kinda, it's, it feels almost awkward, he's just headed home, only now starts the shop. And he's gonna be doing the small green near his base, I'm guessing. And he's doing a lot of scouting, really keeping good tabs on that, where that Death Knight is going. Forces are under attack. What's the War Mill for? Doesn't he want to expand either on the way to tier 2 or on tier 2? You're going to go Grunts, Raiders, Beastury. What's the war mode? Does he want to go into fast headhunters? Maybe. I think it's to fix this weird burrow placement that you talked about, maybe. 
Does that help with the Feng Shui? Kind of. I mean, all the burrows are in <laughs> one straight line. In, in theory, Panda Breath could hurt, but uh, yeah. Well, Burrow Push is not really something we see much of at all anymore nowadays. Like the aggressive play here by Vortex, you want to delay the expansion creep as much as possible. The Illusion's definitely helping out here, being found on uh, both sides, actually. Could wake up the camp, trigger some Bloodlust, annoy Spiral and prevent level 2 wolves for as long as possible. Level 2 wolves early are so, so powerful against fiends. I think this is where Side made a mistake yesterday. Creeping 2 passively, not being enough in the orc's face. But Vortex here, I really like what he's pulling off so far. Probably is going headhunters. Two grunts into headhunters. Hmm. Usually the only moment you're going to see this is if you host a game with a computer. No matter on what level, he'll mix in grunts and... Uh, Headhunters, it's gonna look nonsensical, but guess what? It's now meta, Remo. Was oh, he gonna scout this? The illusion. Man, this illusion drop has been so amazing. And he finds Spiral on the way north again. Spiral wants to creep away the natural of his opponent. That would be very beneficial indeed, but he's been scouting again. Vortex is hot on his heels, preventing this far series progress, which is very good. And to add on top of that, he even managed to fit in a few green camps here and there. Yeah. Masterful early game by Vortex. Yeah, the Lich is on the way. He already started uh, tier three. Slaughterhouse is now gonna start. And usually the Ziggurats follows here at Vortex on 30 out of 30. Perfect execution so far. Scouts the fast tier three, sees the war mill and the second here on the way. I gotta say, uh, Wall of Illusion is a hell of an item in the hand of those guys. Like, they scouted yeah. literally everything on one another this whole time. Pretty damn good. Finally, Vortex has to concede one camp going to Spiral. That is the Merchant. That's not even fully level 3 for the Farseer, though, I believe. Especially if the, T if the TC comes in to soak up some experience. But the Farseer will get very, very close and will get a big item here. This is also very nice when playing TC. No matter what you find here, it's good. Big healing, big invul, big mana, even scroll, even one of mana steel, everything's good. Which is why it should be a priority for the TC to try to creep these camps. Creeping the enemy merchant away, the undead merchant away, would be amazing for Spiral, but Vortex is going there right away. Going this time with Frost Armor, not with Nova. Yeah, Spiral just checked the expo of Vortex to make sure that it wasn't being taken or anything too crazy. I mean, obviously you wouldn't really expect that against the Death Knight play, but he sent a wolf there so that the only the item was collected and the expo wasn't entirely cleared. So you should know. Double big that. mana, dude. Neo That's on it. the sidelines being like, it's rigged! It's rigged! Double big mana again! Unbelievable! And one of the win on Spiral. That can be very dangerous as yeah. well, because only a destroyer can cancel that out with the spell, but Destroyers, they're gonna be in danger against that many headhunters. They take a while to get there. You can wait until he's already used the spell and then use the one of the winds. Yeah, in the late game fights for Undead Micro, it's all about having the coil at the perfect time. And the wand of the wind, if used properly, can completely destroy a fight for the Undead. This is by far the best item you can find for one fight at least, or maybe for two, depending on how many charges you use. Vortex also wants to take out the Magi. For him, it's taking a little while though. No orb yet. Farseer comes in to say hello. Is he going for the? Wait, what's he Dude, doing? He ran past the army. He's trying to <laughs> pretend that it's oh. an illusion. And Vortex he's got the staff again. Oh my god. Yeah, he definitely wasn't looking at his first hero right there. He was busy creeping, I guess. TC taking out the merc camp. He got Lionhorn. Very good. I thought that was like a fake. You know, he's like, I'm an illusion. I'm an illusion. Oh shh. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to see a tiny Great Hall this time? That's the question. Yeah, Spyro's definitely not ahead after this early game. Tiny Great Hall right now would be mega greedy. Yeah, he kept the staff and the aura on the false here. He's going Big again. Stuff from the Special skeleton space. as well. Sees the false here coming in, so he knows there might be wolves saying hello. So the ghouls should be greeting the false here right away. While Vortex takes out the Overlord. Cloak of Flames! Might not even be too bad against the mass headhunters if the DK can position himself well. Well, the DK is not supposed to be in the middle of the army, though. Yeah. But maybe if the fight gets awkward and you can be far away from the TC, it's definitely not the best item. 
walls being a little bit annoying around the main base. It's gonna force the schools to defend for a little bit. Vortex. We did have a little bit of extra wood, so that's not too bad. But yeah, that Lich is almost three. And Death Knight almost four. Hitting war is always nice on this map. Like if you're creeping, like let's say one of the big total, or even to replenish after a fight, like the value you get out of it is insane. In fights, not so much, even though it can be annoying for the opponent if he already has to do many things to also have to take care of that. And again, the early game reflecting itself here in the late. Vortex keeping tabs on his opponent really well, not allowing him to creep too greedily, and still taking small camps himself. That's level 3 Lich now, and another Claws. Slippers on the Dark Ranger, that makes me happy. Vortex looking good, only thing he's missing is an Inbull, which could turn into a problem. Maybe an Invis potion again, we saw how key it was yesterday for Spiral. Not opting to buy it here, even though he's got the gold. He's not yet on 50, maybe that's why. And Vortex is going to secure a Legion Doom Horn. Yeah. Isn't he a happy chappy right now? Not too helpful for him, of course, outside of the gold, but keeping that away from the Orc does make quite the difference. Spyro will take the scraps of the camp. That should be level 2 Shadow Hunter, which isn't too bad. Yeah, we saw it took a long time actually for him to get level 2 Shadow last game. It was all about that Hex in the first place, but having Hex and healing available. The Chieftain, is he waiting for that Invis Potion here? Fast here, kind of keeping tabs on the Undead Army. Creeping up the map more and more. Vortex so far had a better game, creep-wise, certainly, by a little bit. Question is... Who is going to want to take a fight at what time, with what units, what do they view as their power spike? What a lot of undeads have started doing against this mass headhunters is throw in a couple of A-bombs, one or two, for the disease cloud, but we don't see that here. We see a fight starting off. We have a silence on the Dark Ranger, a hex I mean, but only now is the silence relevant. That hex was way too early. Great start of the fight for Vortex. Microing against the TC as well. Stomp now finally comes in, but the headhunters... Can't even put in the damage. A lot of them have been taken out already. Level 2 Nova will hurt. Dark Ranger in trouble. The two destroyers, though, have more to spell. The TC at the far here, I mean, very much in danger there with his position. The cloak does something, and it's more and more kills going Vortex's way. Absolutely amazing fight for the undead. That is him clearly smashing that battle. And now, a moment like this screams for an expansion. Yeah, Vortex has 60 supply. So he might just move to the bottom right and secure the last few big camps. He knows that it's very hard for Spiral to re-engage immediately after this. But Spiral, knowing that this could be happening, he knows he can't let that happen. So he's going to position himself to maybe go and fight and maybe get the Creepjack in the corner here. Healing Ward was already used. Can he spot him early enough? No, Vortex. it's not going to be early at all. He saw the opponent coming with the skeleton, still commits for the camp, willing to TP out if necessary. But maybe not even necessary. It's hard for the TC to get in here. It's a tight bottleneck. He's going to get silenced 100%. Does have an invul, but doesn't have a dust. This time he yeah. forgets about it. Boro saves the feed. Here we go. Vortex engaging. Death Knight at the front can on its own. Oh my god, if he gets hexed, might not be able to oh! come. Oh! There was no mana. Close. The shadow and no mana for hex. Oh my god, and if also... he killed that, the rest of the army will be trapped there. He did go for the preemptive dispel on the destroyer, so may have worked out with the timing, but that was scary. And that is the danger uh, of this late game orc. So much disable with stomp, with hex, in this case not even ensnare, but the focus fire is dangerous. I like Vortex going death pact here to play it safe, but in this case he didn't have the time for death pact. This could have cost him the hero. So, decent little TP force there by Spiral, but the fiend that was devoured isn't dead yet. Now, Vortex seeing everything and could yeah. line up another creep deck. He might have noticed that uh, we are low on mana on these orc heroes. Whereas because he has statues, he's replenishing way quicker. The fiends are about to have plus three attack. He's moving in oh, there, wow. teaching in the middle of everything. Does he use the invul? Yes, starts landing one of those first big stomps. Remember, he still has the Wand of the Wind with two charges. Use this one on the Death Knight. The Shadow Hunter is gonna melt instantly, as do the destroyers. Trying to get that Dark Ranger. I think he's going to get the kill. He's committing in deep, though, into the back line. No TP on the Farce here, by the way. He's also kind of a squishy hero, don't forget. And all charges of Wand of the Wind have been used. Now, finally, the DK can go back to work. A lot of the army of the Undead has been taken out. Speed scroll to reposition. TZ has the big mana potion still. He's going to pop it here next to the Fiend in the perfect position. Gets off another good stomp. 
But Vortic is still fighting on. Level 4 now on the Lich. Much more mana. And another Nova rattles in to the back line. Berserk is dying. Fiend's dying. Who's coming out on top? It's hard to tell. But Vortic still certainly with way more supply. And once the hero runs low, the Undead heroes still are... Uh, the mana runs low. Undead heroes still strong. The Farsi are in trouble. No TP or anything to save him. He's gonna die. And it is yeah. GG. Vortex comes back swinging on map 2. Makes it a 1-1. One, one. Who Vortex, man, runs in the ropes and knocks out Spiral with a Lariat there. I didn't expect that at all. Super strong performance and it feels like we see this more and more that one player is pretty dominant on one map and then there's a comeback and boom, we get game three where both are showing their best. This is very it's promising. Hard. Oops, sorry. Yeah, it's hard to stay focused uh, after a game one. Like, game one was really rough for uh, Vortex, but he came back super strong in game two, so that's really cool to see. Yeah, that early game was 1-0-esque. That was amazing. That was so crisp, so insane. That was just mind-blowing. Preventing the Farseer's levels as well as he did and getting ahead with the DK with a Ted Fiend build. That's almost impossible. The Wand of Illusion certainly helped there, but amazing play by Vortex. All right, we give Remo a little time to write a love letter and a poem to Vortex, and then we're back with a decision in Europe. That's it guys, the last map of the European group stage is upon us and we're gonna conclude everything here on Concealed Hill. Yeah, once Remo joins, we can Oops. do that. Here we go, I'm back. Slow poke. <laughs> yeah, actually it's very interesting. It seems like they're just playing one main style each, even though the build order was different, especially from Vortex in game one. Now we're headed to Concealed Hill, so 
the theme of Sparrow this series seems to be to go for Headhunters. Uh, Torn Chieftain second, Shadowhunter third, but he just he fell behind last game and never really could get anything going. Unlike in game one where he did very well, set up the expo and then was always ahead. So the early game going to be extremely important yet again here on the Council Hill. What strat are we going to see? The same. The same, you think? Yeah. On Conceal Hill. But what you is see this... Vortex busting out a Dreadlord? <laughs> Crypt Lord? <laughs> Crypt Lord Expo? Maybe. He will still dream and what will Spiral play? Is it going to be the grunt opening again or will he go straight into Headhunters? We have it here. The decision. Will we see an Orc in the round of eight or will it be five undeads? Speaking of overperformance, let's go CH. My prayers are not answered. Todd, I know you were very much looking forward to a Crypt Lord as well, but it looks like DK will be the play once more oh, with an no. altar into Ziggurat. <laughs> Crypt Fiend, uh, Ted Fiend opening, that is. So DK with a fast tech, what we should expect. And Spiral with an normal build here, no early headhunters. Question is, Farseer or Blade Master once again. This map specifically is pretty poor for Blade Master, so Farseer seems extremely likely. It's always interesting when I hear that. Like, I guess it's a lot about like the creeping, collecting some items. But I'm like, does he does he not walk through units? Does he not crit on this map? <laughs> but yeah, there are obviously more factors than that, and it is going to be a Farseer. Are you satisfied with the burrow placement, or should we call the interior decorator to take to have a look at this and redesign you know, it? The, in the last game, the first burrow was looking fine. The second one, that's what looked a little wonky. So, too spicy for you? As long as the next burrow isn't right next adjacent to the first one, I guess I'm fine. Yeah, Voltix last game, we talked about how it was uh, the one of illusion that really helped him a lot in order to prevent the Farseer from creeping and creeping himself. On this map, that shouldn't happen. I mean, the only place you could find that is at the shop, which usually is not necessarily done very early. So I don't think we're going to be seeing something similar. Obviously, also Conceal Hill is a very different map in terms of rush distance. Where do you go about uh, trying to creep and preventing the opponent from doing that? Do you think it favors anybody, this map? It's definitely... Pretty good for the Farseer TC Expo style. Um, and with Grunts, if you have some space, you can creep some pretty juicy camps very well. For example, the Natural with lots of medium armor, you can creep very well yeah. if you're left alone. And also the Lab, if you have a moment of time. The thing is, on Concealed, there's so many hard camps. All the valuable ones in the mid game are pretty hard. Any creep jack could be painful, but also distances are rather large. Once again, it's going to be up to the Farseer to get level 3 fast and uh, buy space for the TC so we can really start rolling early on in the game, which did not work on Last Refuge. This time, Spiral's going to try to accelerate a little bit faster with his first hero. I wonder if there's any chance Yeah, we don't see the War Mill and he just plays like a lot more standard. Just a bunch of grunts and then expands. Because last, like in the game number one, he went directly into Headhunters. Looked really good one. Game two, he went two grunts into Headhunters and he just... I mean, obviously, there is, it's not just about the strategy, right? It comes down to the execution, what's happening in the game, who's creeping and how, but oh, wow. that didn't work nearly as well. That's sick read. This Huntsman makes a world of difference. Wait, what? Who got it? DK got it. Okay, it wasn't quite level 2. Not that big of a difference. I thought it would be level 2. <laughs> but this is a build that Spiral has shown in the Meisterschaft quite a bit, being aggressive with the Farseer and then trying to keep attention on the green camp. So the Grunt and the... Wolves creep that first green and then move Arthur to the over to the other green to creep that, get the Farseer level 2 and then heal up after at the fountain. But it seems like Vortex did his homework. He knew Spire was going to do it or he just had a crazy, I don't know, star player read. And no war mill. So it's going to be just a more standard full grunt style. No head and here being made uh, in the first place. And I'm assuming maybe not at all, or at least for, for a very long time. Death Knight, yeah, still level 1, as is the Foss here. Yeah, Should he just go for the Turtles down there? Yeah, I was wondering, why was he going north? Maybe he expected the Foss here in the north. And here's now Spiral going for 
the Cobalt. Is that level two? Yes, it certainly is. And you know, they've now... been leaving a lot of tomes behind, by the way. It's really How starting to piss me off. The glass I mean, here. Obviously, the one on the right side right now is too far away. Ooh, Death Knight gets the experience and level two in the process. He, oh, he goes around surround. Cloak, though. Ooh, nice save. Quick with that reaction. And the chain lightning connected, but it has a bit of a delay on the actual damage that it does. They could have passed in a TP forced if not for that cloak. Absolutely. I think it would have been, yeah. That would have been huge too, because you put the Death Knight low and you make him Town Polo. Of course, there is fountains, but you can kind of keep tabs on them, sometimes to wake up the creeps. And it's only for nighttime. Or you can go for the, the best item in the game, the dagger, to try and heal. The Farsi are actually getting blocked for a little bit here. He's going to try to go on the other side. He doesn't quite have two Death Cards. I don't think he should go for it. Yeah, he's just going to give it up. That wouldn't have been a kill, most likely. Maybe he could force the Town Portal, but he would have had to lose all of his mana and a lot of time as well. Yeah, the Farseer gonna heal up at the fountain here. I'm surprised there's not a skeleton here waking up the creeps. I guess ideally there should be. He also used a lot of mana. He just resummoned the wolves, but they're not level two. They're only level one. Again, because the vortex slowed down the Farseer so impressively. And he's only gonna have one resummon. This Farseer is gonna be dry for quite some time. Oh my god, these Death Knights taking so much damage. Dude. Dude. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. TP? Imagine if he had a speed scroll. It takes two more hits. Lich comes Ooh. in. With the Nova, perhaps you could have threatened the Farsi yeah. as well. But. That could have been the ultimate magnets. A player's okay. Force is Ritual right. Dagger, here we go. Look at that healing. So broken. <laughs> Feels really meantime, bad though, when you misclick and eat the Fiend. I've done that before. On this on this map, if you have like all the creeps on your side of the map, which was which is the case here, Spiral, he just did a small camp on the right side of his main, now goes straight for the expo. And he should be very close to level three after he's done with that. Maybe he can just grab the merchants and have that. So it's a very clean creep route with a fast level three, after which he can start being super aggressive. Yeah. This is the big strength of playing TC Expo, TC Second Expo on this map. See that against Human also a whole bunch. Usually the TC can get that level up pretty easily, as long as the Farseer applies enough pressure, yeah. which so far he seems to be able to do. I know I don't like rings, but apparently Spell's hate for rings is bigger than mine. He left his item at the Expo next to the... <laughs> next to the Expo going up. Don't tell me he leaves the tome as well. All right, that's it. I'm done. Oh my god. He literally left the ring there. It's a ring plus four. Oh my god. Okay, I thought that was the real last night. I was like, imagine if he goes there and picks it up and leaves. Uh. One of Man of Steel. That's a pretty nice find here for the DK against the TC. Statue way too far forward. Gets ensnared right away. But it's hard to engage into this for Spiral. Frost Armor now coming in. Speed scroll, but still getting blocked over here by Illusions. TC in a difficult position. So the statue actually survives. Not a good engagement for Spiral at all. Doesn't get any kills with that first speed scroll. Still no level 3. Waiting for that next end snare. Uses it on perhaps the wrong statue. And... A raider goes down. The Farseer trying to close the surround over here. He just wants this freaking statue to get to level 3. Right, but the TC in the meantime... He's gonna have to TP. In trouble. Waited for himself. one extra coil. And yeah, just like that. Vortex actually saw that there was a ring, by the way, the expo up there with the illusion. But there's not going to be uh, any retrieving mission here. And now going for the orb. Going to attempt the Ogre Lord block. Need to kill the sheep on the way, that's important. Espel's actually scouting for that here with the wolf. He might not creep, I guess he has to. And he's still going into Headhunters, by the way. Yeah, Torn Chieftain wasn't level 3 quite yet here. I was surprised he didn't do the Merchant after that, but I thought... I guess he just wanted to play aggressive sooner than that. Probably thought it would take too long. Consumable, just inventory in general, looking pretty oh sad my God. Spiral. Cag Dust Pipe. Oh, speaking of, inventory looking pretty good for Vortex here. Cag Dust Pipe the Dream. Level 2 Lich also, very important. Now unlocking the Nova. And he's right next to the Tavern. Third hero, Dark Ranger, on the horizon. But the expansion is about to finish here for Spiral. Yeah, the peons went back home to 
bring back the gold. Do you think he's ever going to pick up that ring or is Vortex going to pick that up? He might, honestly. TC is going to the shop first. Begging for a creepjack, kind of. The spell comes in. Wolves, very damaged. Farseer never made it to level 3, by the way. This would be it, but he doesn't quite have it yet. I believe he got that last hit, but it wasn't quite enough for the level up. A little bit more experience here for Vortex, getting closer to level 3 Lich. Oh, and wow. the invul got... still in the shop. Yeah, and he's not buying that for some Not reason. going for it? He needs what? to take that away from the TC. And Rejuvenation Potion is such a good item here, by the way. He yeah. was missing quite a few and hit points. Ring. And mana. the ring! And No. Picks up the ring! Unbelievable. Spirals, that nerve's showing. You ring hater. Spell on 58 supply here. He's got a giant army. He's finally gonna go for it. So and we have right silent first this time, by the way. No black arrow. He wants yeah. to make sure he can negate the, the effect of that chieftain. Which doesn't have the invuln still. Holding on to the Nova here for quite some time. Scroll of speed coming in. Vortex falling back. Kodos so far not getting off Devours, but there's going to be a stomp in a second. Decent split by Vortex. Now Kodo gets off a Devour. Only two fiends left standing. Farseer not in the group. What's he doing? Not using any spells at the moment. One Kodo getting taken out. Little four now for the DK. That was a brilliant stomp there though by the TC. He's going to have one more of those, maybe two, with the one of Mana Steel. Vortex trying to scramble, trying to get his forces back together. One statue will be falling. Coil comes in last second. So many units for Spire, but it seems like they can't all quite connect. If the Kodo goes down, it's a Fiend returning. That's going to be the next target now for Vortex. And he's going to get that as well if he wants to use the Nova. And he does. Has to fall back for the Lich in trouble. Getting surround here, possibly. First coming in with the Coil, trying to kill off the Wolves. Wasn't quite a surround. Vortex repositions. And that was Vortex surviving most of the mana of Spiral. TC completely dry. Yeah, I thought he might have to town portal, but actually managed to just barely get out of there in the nick of time. Cactus Pipe is really going to come into full effect now. If he can get a second statue in particular, he's choosing to stay a little more. Feels like a lot of those units are already low on hit points, and knowing that the Chieftain does not have any mana makes him want to fight a little bit more. He needs to be careful not to overextend. Oh, the Lich getting ensnared. There must be a coil for him. Without Stomp, it's just so easier to take these fights. TC doesn't have time for Clarity or for perhaps a mana potion. Destroyer's not getting ensnared. That one was used before. Nova hits into the back. You're right. This Cadgas pipe is really coming into his full effect right now. And the Dark Ranger is level 2. Now we have Dark Arrow as well. TC forced out of the fight once more. Destroyer's still alive. Dispelling more and more. But Fiend's still going down. Vortex definitely missing some statues over here. I imagine though they will be coming. As mana is being spent. But of course Spiral has more money to spend. Let's dropping low again. But um, once more there's going to be more coils. There's always coils with this yeah. Cadgas pipe. He misses it on the Destroyer. That one is actually going down. Fiend moved to the north. And again, without Ensnare, hard to find actually any of these kills. There's also no dust, so Boro could come in. Not sure if he has the upgrade. Actually, he does not. So that cannot be used here to save the units. But Spiral does hold on. Needs a pause. Unfortunately, late at night, oftentimes the ping acts up. Spiral, we want to have everyone here playing under the best conditions. Looking at the supply, we see it's very close. It's a very tense moment in this game. Crazy. Yeah, Spiral must be confused. He's like, why are you not running out of mana? I don't know if he checked the inventory or if he... Yeah, if he did... Maybe take the low light approach. You don't want to be disappointed in check at all. That definitely would be confusing because... You know, you get a feel for how these games are going, usually when you play as much as these guys. And right now, the Undead always has a Death Coil. It just never runs out. Next to the Red Camp, also here is Vortex. Healing would be quite juicy. Can only creep that very well, though, with a Destroyer, for which he would have to morph one of his only statues. Seems to be working out very w rather well. Is he getting web? Nope. Confident he can do this without web. Was scouted by a wolf, but Spiral's certainly not in position or strong enough to contest right now. So this might be another big camp going Vortex's way, but Vortex a little apprehensive. Not committing too hard, I guess. Still a bit afraid of a creepjack here, perhaps. It's gonna give the orb to the Death Knight to creep the Drake a little bit quicker. Spiral realizing what's happening. Spiral's getting out leveled really hard. The problem is that for all this time. The pipe was still active, and now those heroes, they have so much mana to work with. The Death Knight is back on 215. TC is close to full, but he had to use a clarity for that. 50 supply for Spiral, 50 for Vortex. But it's a tier 3, tier three army with Tri-Hero we're talking about here. 
Yeah. This iron army is getting stronger and stronger. Lich close to four, by the way. Dark Ranger close to three. DK not too far away from five. So many kills going Vortex's way. DK also full mana. Nice stomp right there. Can he convert? Can he get the kills? No chain lightning at the moment. Farseer still tons of mana. Silence once again. Next stomp prevented. Farseer very far forward, by the way. What's he doing there? First the Kodo getting focused, but Spiral needs to be careful with his positioning. Good kiting by Vortex, falling back further to the fountain. Lich hits level 4. Now we have the Dark Ritual. He sees, and the Farseer, he eyes him up, goes for the nuke, and gets the kill! We saw it there a mile away. The Farseer was overexposed. Spiral saw it a little bit too late. Couldn't save his first year, and now everything is falling completely apart. The level 2 skeletons just completely ravaging these headhunters, and this orc army is turning into an undead army little by little. Vortex with 46 supply still looking strong, pushing forward. He is going to have more and more sustain here with statues coming in soon. Spiral 34 only. This is it. It's GG. And Vortex fulfills the comeback, gets the victory, makes it top eight. And with that, eliminates the horde.